Wow, we are back together again. I can't believe it. CJ is here. <laughs> Welcome, CJ. Hello. <laughs> How's uh, the beard? Uh, it's going. I've trimmed it a couple of times, uh, but uh, it, it's still going. Yeah. Playoff <laughs> beard. Exactly, yeah, that's yes. That's it. <laughs> All right. So we've got everybody together, as we promised, uh, back in February. It's playoff time. Uh, we're on the air a couple of days late, normally Tuesday, but we had some scheduling. Actually, it was because there was a lot of uh, a lot of kids uh, sick across the country. Sickness. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and so two of them in my own household. I think CJ had one and, and then I got it. So I'm now I'm on the other end of it. I got it for a uh, day. It's like a. It's like a cold, it's, it's like cold and flu types. And like my throat was on fire yesterday. I'm like, well, I'm glad we moved it to That's Thursday true. because I don't know if I could have talked yeah. yesterday. So, uh, no, I, I'm on the other side of it now. Extra day, yeah, it's, we all been through it and it sucks. There's no question. All right. Now, uh, we've got a lot to cover, uh, in the next, uh, 50 minutes. So, Let's get to it. First, let's talk about – let's just uh, ra wrap up last week, uh, which was really crazy. So, first of all, CJ, what did you think about last week? Uh, just the whole, geez. like, idea of it. <laughs> well, um, so I would say NASCAR did one thing right, which was restart the race early on Saturday. They still got – uh, caught out by the rain later on. Um, that was a pain. I think what they really screwed up for the fans, though, is that it was impossible to tell what was going to be on and when. They they had zero information. So when I turned on at 7, it was supposed to be on. I had golf. They didn't even say NASCAR was going to be on. They said golf yeah, is going to be a simulcast. 2018 golf. Exactly. Exactly. So they Nothing. could have a weather delay on for NASCAR, but they're going to show recorded golf coverage. Because golf was under weather delay as well. Exactly right. Made all the sense in the world. Uh, so after a long search on Twitter, I finally found the announcement that it was going to restart at 7.30. I'd gone over to Peacock. I, I turned on Peacock. There was nothing there. So I was waiting for 7.30. They started before 7.30. But then yeah. it didn't matter because nothing ended up running anyway. So, wow. you know, they, they finally ran it in the morning, depriving us of yet another night race, mind you. I am so I of the lack of night races. It in was, this. And it was clear all night on Absolutely. Sunday night. Absolutely. And then, and then we just have a crash fest for the race. <laughs> yeah. The whole idea of it makes a lot of sense. When you go in, Eric, we've talked about it. It's exciting. You never know what's going to happen and all that kind of stuff. You know, a driver could be knocked out. You can get in last chance. Uh, but you wrote a lot about this uh, over the past week about, just the timing of, of the summer and, and Florida and rain. And, and it's just, maybe something has to be done. I don't know what it is. Maybe it is starting the race real early in the morning. Like they used to. I think that's probably the only thing you can do. I mean, it's Florida. It's the summer. It rains like every day. And it used to be the old adage. If you need rain, bring NASCAR to town. Well, you bring NASCAR to town in the Florida day. What do you think is going to happen? It's like, it's, why did, I don't know. Every year, it's like we bang our heads against the wall. It's like it was simple, like CJ said. If you started at ten, we got ninety-five percent of the race in. There's a reason they used to start it about ten, eleven a.m. every Fourth of July or Fourth of July weekend um, is because you beat the summer storms that come in. So, to me, I think the the solution is simple: move Daytona back to july run it in the morning and then find a race which i think atlanta is probably a good spot because it races like daytona or talladega and you can run at night there and you're not dealing with rain and you can end the regular season under the lights and you're not fighting this rain because i think part of the reason they pulled the plug early saturday was they're like well we don't want to have our game seven type moment at 2 a.m sure. which would be completely ruins any reason of yes. having it and I feel like running at 10 a.m. probably ruins a lot of chances, too, of, like, well, you had a game seven. Like, can you imagine the game seven, like, the NBA finals? Like, hey, we're going we're gonna to play at 10 a.m. Like, what? <laughs> so stop fighting it. Move it to July. Move something else there, which, again, Atlanta. Because running Atlanta in the middle of the day in July makes absolutely zero sense either. But at least I feel like Atlanta 
it gives you the action. And like we saw like Corey LaJoy running up front. But the bigger names still probably are going to win. So it's fluky, but not as fluky as what Daytona would be. So I think it's probably the best option you but can have. But they're not going to do it. As I say, it's NASCAR. They're not going to do yeah. it. They're no chance. We'll double down. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll come right yes. back again next we'll week. We'll double down. <laughs> It is, you know, I, I, at least we give him credit for starting in the morning. They, I, we haven't seen him do that yet. And they they did wait so we could finish the race after another long delay. I wonder if they would have just, regular season race, they would have just said, forget it, we're not waiting anymore. But it's the last race before the playoffs, so we have to get it in. It, it, but then the crashes, it's just, the, and we talked about this too, Eric. It's like, the prestige of winning at Daytona just isn't there anymore. Anybody wins yeah. these races. All the best cars are just knocked out. So it's like, does it really matter? I know it's not the 500, but it's like, here's who wins the Daytona 500 anymore. It's just not that prestigious. In reality, I mean, I understand they don't think that way, but for us as fans, it's like, who are these guys winning these big races? Yeah, I mean, it should be, you think of your big events, it should be like an exclusive fraternity, yes. like the big names are in it. And then you look up at Daytona, you got Austin Sendrick, Trevor Bain, Michael McDowell, Austin Dillon's now. It's just, there's too much randomness to it, which again, I, I feel like the only reason it makes it special is one, the name, and two, it's like you won the lottery. If you win a race there, it's like, hey, I got the golden ticket. I, I didn't wreck. I feel like that's what everybody thinks going into these races now, is you got a better shot of wrecking then you do a winning, and then that guy, that fan, that better, which I wish I was thought of what he did by throwing tops on long shots because that's what's going to happen at these tracks because those guys, like I wrote about, if you look, the TV doesn't show it. You got to be there in person. You see the pack go by, and then you'll see another mini pack go by behind them, and then you're going to see these long shots, and they're going to be way back. They're not even close. They're – they're in risk of losing the, the – they're completely have lost the draft, but they're running together good enough to stay in front of the lead group, but they're nowhere near the TV coverage. They do that by design because they don't want to – they don't have the money to get caught up in a wreck. So everybody just wrecks each other. And you look up at the end like, there's Landon Castle running yeah, for it. There's guys. BJ. Yeah. Man, and it's like, what? that was smart of that guy to bet $13 to win a million on those got parlaying it. To, it's like – so. Again, which further adds to our, to our debate is like, is it make it as special when your top 10 is full of a bunch of no, no name guys? No, <laughs> it's, it's like, man, I could take I could take my Honda CRV and ride around 40th all day, <laughs> fall three laps down. And now I'm going to get the lucky dog because there's going to be about 75 cautions in the final 75 laps. It's, it seems like they can't even run a green flag lap. They're all wreck. And then then you got rain. It just. Hey, it's raining right there. You could see it on the onboards, but let's just let him keep going. It's it's not going to hit here, even though it's raining right there. And then everybody wrecks. It's just well, what would have ha- again, and and what would have happened if a driver would have knocked uh, some driver that didn't deserve to be in the playoffs had knocked with their twenty ninth or thirtieth in points, and they had knocked one of those drivers out. What would we be saying to those drivers? Well, you had all season. You shouldn't have left it to the last race, but. In reality, that would have been that wouldn't have been good. It would have happened, and you would have been screwed. Yeah. That's what we would have said. You should have won before. You had all season, but that still would not have been a good thing. So, for Martin Truex Jr., you know, I, I, I there was a lot of luck there in that race, no question about it, between Junior and Blaney. But um, you know, uh, Ryan Blaney, we've, we've criticized his uh, pit crew all season. I know, CJ, you haven't been around for the criticisms, but we we criticized <laughs> Ryan Blaney's pit crew early on the first couple of months when he had th- two or three opportunities to win races if it wasn't for terrible pit road, um, uh, pit road work by those guys, and they came through for him and at least got him out there. And uh, it, it, was, it was something to see him kind of inch his way closer and closer and then finally past Truex in the final laps. It was an incredible comeback to watch. I, when he got caught up in that first accident, I thought it was done. I mean, you look at that right front wheel, it was trashed. Uh, the team got him back out. He was off the damage clock. I think he probably used maybe half of it, if I'm not mistaken. 
And then it was just a matter of time. I mean, the way that the circumstances played out through the race with all the crashes, it was inevitable that Truex was going to get involved in one of them, and he was. What was crazy to me, though, was that they, they, the, the TV left Blaney for how long? Yes. So you had no idea. No. You knew he was on track, but you had no idea where he no. was, what was going on. And then all of a sudden, boom, Blaney's four points behind Truex, and they start tracking it. It's like, what the heck is going I know. on? Terrible. You, you're watching after that last rain delay, you're watching him make laps in each car that was involved in that track or in that crash, you just see one point going away, another point going away, like every single lap. Uh, and then, you know, when Truex finally got shuffled out of that mini little pack that he was in, in those last five laps, that was it. It yeah, was yeah, over. Nobody to pass, um, yeah. But yeah, they did a terrible job. They completely missed terrible. pumping up the that uh, because they had left Blaney. They thought he was done and roasted, but he, he was not. And he came back and he is there. And in fact, it's funny when I was getting ready to, to go into this show, I was looking at my, my picks and my new picks, my updated ones. And I'm like, where, how far do I have Truex going through here? And it took me a minute. Oh yeah. Truex isn't in this anymore. <laughs> it's just unbelievably crazy this season. Uh, and that, go ahead. And I did, you know, in that fashion just carries that, uh, unbelievableness forward. So it's going to be an interesting playoffs for sure. And, and Eric, how, I mean, how often do we have to talk about this? Because CJ spot on, I'm watching this. They, they talked a lot about it in the open of the, of the race and the show and all that. And Blaney and Truex and Blaney and Truex. And then they completely forgot about it. And then at the end of the race, they had their nerve. I'm sitting there going, how can you not have a split screen? of Blaney and Truex or at least have even Blaney and the leaders because Truex was with the leaders. What did they do? They put a split screen out with the leaders and Truex. (laughs) They didn't show Blaney for like the last half hour of the race. I, I mean, again, how can they not have help in the booth of somebody that understands what is going on with some brainiac mathematician NASCAR playoff guy that sits there and passes notes to them every minute or two to let them know what's going on. It's bad because I was looking at the um, their media, like the virtual media center, and I had the, the running order that they have on their feed. And I even knew with, was it 16 to go? 17 to go when we went back green and I'm yep. counting and I don't know why they weren't counting. I was like, wait a minute here because every spot is a position. And if Truex is this many points ahead, but there's really not much he can do. Yeah. He's got a damaged car. And you look at him like, well, well, Eric Jones was caught up in that wreck. And Ty Dillon was caught up in that wreck. And Harrison Burton was caught up in that. I'm like, they're, they may not pass the damaged vehicle policy. And then I'm looking, they're not going to. They're not even mentioning this. It's like, well, there's three points right there. Blaney doesn't have to do anything. And then I'm looking like, it really only takes one more car. Oh, Cole Custer's in the pits. Oh, he lost a lap. Oh, he lost another lap. Blaney's got two. Okay, that's four points. And then Truex is fourth. And then you see him lose the draft. I'm like, at at some point, they're going to mention something, right? At at some point, they have to know. that Blaney is making up points without doing anything. People are literally dropping off. It's like you had to look at the running one, like, well, out, out, out. If you just look at it, it said out, 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 out. It's like he's going to pass all these cars. And then as he was, it's like, how are they ignoring this? So basically he was passing. It wasn't like he was getting points passing cars. He was getting points after he was passing the finish line. Because yes. that, because the cars were off the track. Because he was five laps down. So if in theory, you got to think, it takes him five laps to get ahead yeah, of the yeah, cars we had to wait that for are already out of the race. Laps. Yeah. And they weren't even talking about it. I'm like, he's going to pass another one here in a minute. And then it's like, okay, he's, if I were him, just hang out. It doesn't matter if you lose another lap. Sure. Because again, they, they didn't even mention this. Cole Custer was the only other one on track was two laps behind Blaney at this point. Blaney could have parked his car. with He didn't have to see the white flag at that point. He could have been like, yeah, I'm, I'm already in. It does not matter. 
because Truex lost the draft. He wasn't yeah. even going to get to those top four. So the only thing that would have happened at that point was if, again, I think it was a perfect storm, but they just weren't verbalizing this. Austin Cindric was in the lead at, before that pass. Then Austin Dillon, children's car. Tyler Reddick, children's car. Brendan Gaunt, or Brendan Gaunt. Noah Gregson, who is a, is a children's line car. They're not wrecking. Those three are not going to do anything but yeah. push off. So if anybody wrecked was going to – so he, even if Cindric got wrecked, Trix is only gaining yeah. one spot. So it's like how do you not say that, and how do you not have a montage ready of him – trying to purposely wreck Rosh Chastain on the final lap at Dover, which took him from 4th to 12th, and be like, this is why I didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. Why do you not have that ready? Why do you not have on your own first broadcast at Nashville when he was running 4th and have his crew chief saying, we should stay out, and Truex said, no, I'm going to follow my teammates and come down pit road and go from 4th to 23rd. Uh-huh. Why do you not sure. have that ready? <laughs> How do you not paint that yeah. picture of saying – to me, that's a bigger storyline than Austin Dillon's walk off because. Oh yeah, that was academic. Let's be honest, Blaney yeah, and Blaney and Truex are going to yeah. move the needle more than. Of course, of they a, should have. Of, yeah, and it's they weren't right. He had three hours. That was to the story. This out. Yes, and they just <laughs> forgot about it. That's all. It was embarrassing. And and I, I you know, I, I must say this as as a Ryan Blaney fan though. I, I, somebody has, I don't know, maybe he just saves it for after he goes home with the fellas and has a couple of brews or something, but dude, be a little bit more excited. I mean, you <laughs> yeah. know, what are you doing? You, you just made the playoffs. You have a chance to win the championship because you've been that good all year. And it's like, it's almost like he lost. It's like, he's got this like personality a lot of times where it's like, you don't even know if you won or lost. I, I- are you ready to be confused now for the rest of the season that the owner's points battle oh, that geez. we're now going to have to, <laughs> so, you know, I, I found out the car does not get driver point as far as money. There's no, like Hamlin was talking. He goes, like, you know, who I feel bad for. He goes, oddly enough, he's got the money. I don't feel too bad, but it's Penske because Blaney's in the playoffs and bl- playoff bonuses and stuff get paid out. But that car is not receiving any playoff money back for it because the owner's championship is where all the money is coming from. And that car is not in the owner's championship. The 45, which is now Bubba Wallace driving the 45 car, is now getting that money, not blaming. All right, so, so that's, you're that confusing team, me because I don't care about owner's yeah. stuff. So explain that to me again. <laughs> Wait. So, Most worthless news story of <laughs> yes. the week. Was exactly. this news story, and this is what Eric's trying to explain yes. now. <laughs> this is this is what NBC is going to confuse everybody about yeah. now, because you know they're going to talk about it. So, the owners' championship is separate than the drivers. <laughs> the owners' championship is the car. That's where all the money comes from. That's where all the charter money. That's where all the bonus. Why, money, why is that? Comes from that car. Teams for, the for owners. Okay. Yeah. Owner sponsors and teams foot the bill. Okay. Kind of like the big piece of the pie. So they the really care about more, that. Sure. Oh yeah. If you ask the the owners or the teams, it's more about the owner standings than the actual drive. The driver standings are for us. Like, oh look, Blaney's leading the points, or that's more for us. It's the owner standings is inside the garage okay. that they care about because that's where all the money's at. So Blaney, because we had sixteen winners, he's not in the owners' championship. Because they're not in. the, They didn't win a race. Kurt Busch's car, they're still eligible because they've been running every race with Ty Gibbs. So why is so why, still, why are the rules different? It's the, the same. rules are the same. No, so why can't Blaney, if, if, if they're in the playoffs, why aren't they in the playoffs for the owners? Because Kurt Busch is not in the playoffs. All right. So Kurt, oh, Kurt, because Kurt Busch, even though he's not racing in the playoffs, right. the car. The car is. Correct. It's still in the owner's playoffs. Correct. And there's another wrinkle is okay. now Bubba Wallace is not going <laughs> to drive the 23 car. They're moving him to the 45 car <laughs> because he's a veteran over Ty Gibbs. So now he is going to be number 45 and because he can gain him more points. So, Like I said, the most story. worthless yeah. story of the week. It is. So let's say... <laughs> So you're going to have Bubba points racing. And let's just say, for theory here, 
Bubba does enough because there's enough kind of guys that are backing their way in. Let's say he advances that 45 car to the second round. And then let's say he wins at Talladega. It's like that 45 car, which is 45, but driven by Bubba Wallace, could end up in the round of eight. It'd be a com- this, so this storyline could oddly the enough owners stay around us. for a while. For the owners. Yeah. Which is the farther that goes, the more money implications okay. that are. So it's, <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is, is that uh, since I have Bubba Wallace on my fantasy team, he's still going to try to win. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Driver essentially that doesn't mean he's going to win, <laughs> but yeah. No. So yeah, uh-huh. you've got that too going. And like they made a good point where Truex getting bounced and the Kyle Busch thing, that's a lot of money that Joe Gibbs racing is that 19 car that you could have used to maybe, hey, you know what, Kyle, we'll figure this out. Here's the money. We'll, we'll pay you. I'll take a loss this year for for a future contract, but now it's like you're kind of in a bind. Yeah, and and quickly the the Kyle Busch news, CJ. What do we know about what's going on there? Still know nothing. Kyle Busch is without a ride, as far as we know, for 2023, and there's a lot of stuff. Isn't it unbelievable? They signed Truex. Um, you got Ty Gibbs right there with them. Hamlin's there. Obviously, he's not going anywhere. Um, <clears throat> so Bush is the odd man out. He does not have an agreement. All his Kyle Busch Motorsports teams are hinged on Toyota, though, as well. So if he makes a decision to go with another team, Chevrolet or Ford, what does that mean to all his KBM teams that are affiliated with Toyota? They're not going to like that. So he is in a really, really difficult situation where he is not just thinking about what car he's going to drive himself in the Cup Series in 2023. He's really debating the future of his entire business that he's been building over the past however many years. And that's an extremely successful organization. Uh, I do know that there are a number of teams that are interested in signing him, uh, but we, you know, he's got to make a decision from a manufacturer standpoint. He'd clearly be better off if he could stick with Toyota, but I'm not sure those those options are there for him. And the the way that we've seen, you know, Almirola coming back to Stuart Haas, what the heck was up with that? And, <laughs> you know, why would you, Truex not make, struggling all year, not making the playoffs, uh, also older, why wouldn't you go with Bush to begin with? Granted, Ty Gibbs is coming up and you, you see the writing on the wall for him or maybe, you know, even a Christopher Bell, you know, whatever. But uh, right now it's it's insane to think that Kyle Bush right now, uh, if the season started next year today, he, he wouldn't be in it. OK, best guess then, Eric, where Kyle is going to end up. Uh, I guess I'll say so I, I've heard strong rumblings that it's going to be Colley and Quality. KBM and they're going to be Chevrolet who's driving be, right now think about a new car or take over for so uh, so that 16 car that Almendinger and Daniel Hemrick and all of them have been that splitting part time car okay he'd be full time and then Chevrolet would help foot the bill they'd move all this truck off fleet to Chevy's and then Brexton would kind of be like a Chevy development driver and the goal is, like Kyle keeps saying, by Braxton 16, he can't be full-time in trucks. I'm going to split that ride with him. And then when he's eligible, I'm out. That's his ride. This is his baby now. So that's why he's looking for, like CJ said, the manufacturer play is big here because he's got this truck team to worry about. And he can't be Toyota here and sure. Chevy here. It's got a line. So Ford and Chevy, of course, like, we'll take you. But with Almirola coming back, and I heard Custer's now going to be back, there's really nowhere for Ford for him to go. So then it's like, well, the only thing in Toyota is where you are, and there's clearly a dysfunction there. So Chevy's the only other spot in college. The other one that they talked about was RCR, replacing Tyler Reddick, and then Tyler Reddick getting bought out early and going over to 2311. But I think that's all hindering on what Kurt Busch does. If Kurt Busch walks away, then it makes more sense. If not, then 2311's made it clear. We're not buying Tyler Reddick out. We, we're planning for this. Just like, because we kind of threw it together in 2020 with Bubba, and then last year sure. bringing on Kurt for this season. The whole reason of going for 24 was giving us 18 months to plan. We don't want to just throw this together. And we're not going to buy a third charter. It's too late in September. We're not going to buy one for next year. So we're just going to sit 
stand still and we'll see what happens. Well, I think one can make a case Kurt doesn't come back. Well, is that where Kyle goes for a year? But Kyle can't wait forever. And so I think the option that I heard is either colleague or Kurt, that status may be set aside for a third part-time car next year, or he doesn't come back and Tyler Reddick could slide over and Childress brings Kyle Busch over. And he admitted they talked. Richard has said that him and Kyle have talked. So I think it could go either direction, but. And, and none of this has anything to do with talking. like uh, Kyle Busch himself. Like there's no problems with Kyle as a businessman or a person. It's just everybody's hands are tied. I think with, the, with M&M's deciding that they were going to leave, uh, I think that's what kind of put the nail so in the coffin, to be honest. so special <clears throat> anymore. Yeah, but at, the, but at the same time, I mean, you can point to any single team in the garage and they'll take Kyle Busch. Yeah, you would think, it, yeah. If they had a seat in the way, they, they would absolutely take Kyle Busch. So I, I got to believe it's not about the person. He's been extremely successful uh, as a representative of his sponsors. He's had his controversial moments, but he's still a fan favorite, and that's what the sponsors want. And he's been extremely successful with Kyle Busch Motorsports, KBM. So, uh, you know, he's got the talent. Uh, I think with M&Ms and the fact that they were around for so long, I think that was probably just the start of the dominoes, and he kind of got caught up in the in the mix unfortunately wouldn't you still say at this point that name recognition kyle bush is still number one as far as nascar is concerned like chase elliott might be oh, yeah. a, a fan favorite but people even that and i because i'm what i'm talking about too is people who i i i pay attention to nascar just a little bit those people they know kyle bush a lot Probably. more than they would know Chase Elliott. Yeah. Okay. For yeah. sure. Well, either either love him or you hate him. Yeah. I mean, people, there's no in between with him. <laughs> where Chase, and plus, I think it having M and M's and the Mars brand, like Snickers sure. and Skittles, it's it's relatable as yeah. kids are probably like, oh, I like that car. Yeah. It's a Skittles car. Yep. So yeah, without having that sponsor, that's the difference. And I think Kyle kind of feels put off by Gibbs. He's saying, I'll take less. I'll just, I'll drive, just offer me something. And then not is kind of telling you, I think Ty Gibbs is going to be that car because he has some sponsorship. So I think, <laughs> I think that's your replacement sitting, right? I think they've seen, like we talked about a couple of shows ago. I think he's proven enough. Like I wasn't like, don't rush him. I don't think he's ready yet to, you kind of have to bring him up now. I don't know what else you're waiting for. This He's actually doing pretty good and his, part-time starts for never being in the cup yeah. car that and he's cheaper he's if you look at it, it's like well i got my grandson here who i don't ever have to worry about leaving he's got some funding he's technically a rookie he will take a lot less than even him saying he'll take a pay cut if i have to spend money on one of the two i'm gonna go this direction because it's cheaper and it helps that's why i mentioned with the truex thing not making the playoffs yeah. it's a huge financial hit that you can make up a little bit by bringing the Ty Gibbs back over. So it just shows you again, the sports all screwed up. This, they need a complete overhaul and it's, it's messed up. This is just ridiculous. That's for the TV deal. That's where the TV deal. This next contract comes in is the owners are now buying like, look, we need a bigger piece of this pie. You give the tracks, all this, you give drivers, this, you we need to flip this. We need to make it where we can sign the sure. best yeah. guy, not sign the guy with the biggest check. And they've been vocal. And they keep saying that this is – this. there's talks of that going down that direction to where that's probably going to happen. So if that happens, because I was thinking probably the same way you were, CJ, when you noticed last week, Daniel Earl, yeah, yeah, last week, Suarez, like a one-year deal, why would you only sign him the one year, like – He's owed multiple years. Well, it sounds like Suarez wanted one year, knowing that the piece yep. of the pie is going to be bigger for him in 24. So I think the drivers are jockeying themselves for that as well. Yep, totally agree. All right. Uh, so, Eric, you, you had a grand total of 35 fantasy points last week. Yep. <laughs> that, was, that was a season The plan long. worked. It was either going to be really good or crashing to a, a, a damage or 
like I said, I, I get to pick up the CJ's drop drive playoff driver. He ends up winning, and he did. Like, well, okay, I guess it played out to my benefit. There you go. <laughs> I get to drop my dead weight and pick up a playoff yeah. driver. Or I was going to have a playoff driver. Either they, they were going to win, I was going to get to pick one up, and it, it played well, out. <laughs> let's see if that helps you for the long haul, because like you said, uh, since you were in third place after that week, CJ gained 100. You had the first pick. CJ had dropped Austin Dillon. And so you, uh, what was that, a couple of weeks ago, CJ? And yeah, yeah. I, um, two weeks, two ago. weeks ago. Maybe, for Gibbs, maybe three. right? For Gibbs, yeah. Right. And so you, Eric decided to pick up Austin Dillon. And you, who did you drop again? McDowell? McDowell. Okay. So yeah. Dillon is now on your fantasy team. And of course, again, check out racereviewonline.net. We have all the updates and everything and the transactions and the, and the standings. And even though I've got a little bit more of a lead, let's keep in mind that the points now. Uh, every round increase. So uh, you've got 200. Uh, now, basically, everything's doubling uh, all yep. the way down the board. So it should be, so it's a lot quicker for someone in second or third to catch up now, uh, as long as you can win some races, which again is the whole reason, as Eric's been pointing out all, all, all year, about how important it is to have your drivers in the playoffs, because those drivers are the drivers that win during the playoffs. Uh, do you have any quick stats for us right now as far as? Exactly the number of drivers who have won uh, playoff races that were not in the playoffs. Uh, I don't have them on top. Of my I, head. I was looking I over do. the just the first uh, four, no, the first three, many. and I had to go back to like 10 years. I think Greg Biffle, yeah, winning in Kansas like in 2007 was the last driver to win a playoff race in the first three races that wasn't in the playoffs. But that's all I did, yeah, that's correct. Like, you're correct. I, I, I think it's, I don't think it's more than 10 total since yes, this I, started in 2004. Five is in my mind, but I, I don't know the stat off the, the top of my head. I, it's got to be though. It, I know it, the first playoff race has never been won by a driver, not in the playoffs. I do know that. Okay. So, um, I mean, let's be honest, more times than not, we know what happens. The drivers stay out of the playoff driver's way. The engines are tuned up a little more. The, like Denny Hamlin said today on, on NASCAR radio that you kind of start stacking your teams. The longer you go in the season now, if the teammates fall off, not championship oh, yeah. eligible, they get all the good stuff. Well, you take yeah. their pit crew. You take, so it just, it just compounds to where it's like, it's going to be hard to beat those guys. And there's a reason they're in the playoffs one and two. It's just hard when they start stacking their team. Like you mentioned, well, we'll see what it, happens in Talladega. To, though. It's hard to beat that. That's the only one. Yeah. And that's, exactly. that's the yeah. one that could go. So, although last year was the first time since 2013 that a non-driver did oh. win Talladega. Okay, who was it? Bubba. Oh, okay. Well, I hope he does it again. All right. So, uh, <laughs> we had one D Darlington race already. Logano won that. None of us picked Logano, by the way, when he won earlier this year. Uh, Eric, you actually ended up with the most points. I was second. CJ was third. Um, and so, by the way, we all had Austin Dillon last week, and we all made exactly $24. All of us. Yep. We had the same investment on Austin Dillon. First time I've ever seen that. So not a big, you know, big uh, uh, number, but still it's better than losing because uh, there was a lot of potential losses out there for us last week. Okay. Uh, now, as far as the playoffs, and then we're going to uh, also just quickly talk about Darlington. But uh, And remember, too, our, our, and, and I know you guys remember, but anybody else out there, when you're checking on our picks on racereviewonline.net, you can find out that our, uh, we can now invest an additional $100 with all our picks in this round. So is it actually, what is it? Is it $100? Uh, so it's now an extra $100. Is it, I forget, is it, is it, does it go up every race? Or is it just hundred dollars per per round. round? Okay, per round. Which yeah. is the one that's every race? One of the three. I can't remember which one. There's futures, um, fantasy, and picks. I forget which one is the one that's uh, every race. Um, okay, I can't remember. It's got. I, yeah, I can't. Futures I maybe. I think it's round. It might be futures. Maybe. Okay. So futures would make sense because that's the one that will change the most. Yeah. Because uh, our oh, fantasy team. Yeah. It is futures. futures. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. All right. Now, uh, first, let's uh, tell you what. Let's go with our picks. 
Uh, and you looked at our picks into preseason. So what did you think about your uh, anything that stuck out with your preseason pick, CJ, and what you got going on now, what you're about to predict? Uh, Kyle Bush is probably what sticks out most right now. <laughs> he can still I win. <laughs> he could still win. Never know. Uh, you know, he's had he's had speed to win more so than he's had in past years. I was expecting him to come in a little bit more guns blazing. I would have thought that the struggles that he had last season, he would have been over them. But comparing him to his teammate, Denny Hamlin, who has had bad luck, but Hamlin has had way more speed, way more consistency. Um, so Kyle Bush of my old picks is the one that sticks out. And who would have thought Ross Chastain would have no. been as he was. Yeah. So yeah, those those two, to me, um, are probably the biggest head scratchers or biggest surprises. Our final four picks. So I had Blaney, Elliott, Hamlin, Larson with Blaney winning, though they're all still available. Uh, Eric, uh, you had Kyle, Byron, Hamlin, Logano with Logano as your championship driver. And by the way, uh, now I know why you were so high on your futures with Joey Logano d- during the season. I totally had forgotten you picked him to win the championship. Yep. And yep. And, and CJ went with Blaney. Even trend. What was that? Even year. Even year. Yep. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Trend. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh, and did we have the same picks? I had Blaney, Elliot, Hamlin, Larson, and CJ had Blaney, Elliot, Larson, Kyle. Okay. So Kyle. we just missed it by one. All right. So uh, let's go through it. Pretty. Let's see. Because this is always so hard. Drivers are going to always get knocked out, and we don't predict that they're going to get knocked out. So who's getting knocked out of your round of 16, CJ? I got Chase Briscoe, Austin Sindrick, Alex Bowman, and Austin Dillon going out after the round of 16. Eric? Got Sindrick, Briscoe, Bowman, Byron. Oh, so three of the same. The only difference is Byron versus Dylan. Correct? Okay. Correct. All right. Uh, go ahead to round of 12 then, CJ. My round of 12 exits are going to be Byron. I catch up with Eric there. I'll have Blaney going out in the round of 12. I've got Christopher Bell and Daniel Suarez going out alongside those two. Eric? Same three with Suarez, Bell, Dylan, I have Dylan out. Um, oh, uh, Kyle, I have Kyle out round twelve. So you, have, who do you have out? Only because those Kyle Bell, Suarez, and Austin Dylan. So we have to have the same seven of the eight. <laughs> Where you going? Uh, yeah, the only difference is do you still have Blaney available? Yep. And CJ, yep. Uh, who do you have available still? Kyle. Kyle. Yep. Sticking with Kyle. I like it. All right. Not for long. All right. So Kyle's <laughs> out. Who else? Kyle is out. Uh, after that, I'm taking Harvick, Reddick, and Chastain out. Eric? Trying to think. Now I got to go through my winners. So I had Harvick, Larson. These are my winners. Harvick, Larson, Logano, Elliott as my championship four. Harvick, Larson, Logano, that- and Elliott. Okay. So that takes what Blaney, Reddick, Chastain, yep, Chastain, Kyle. No, you did Kyle. I said Reddick, right? Yes, you did. Oh, Hamlin. Hamlin. Hamlin would be him. Yeah. Okay, and so who's your final four, CJ? My final four has evolved. It is Elliot, Logano, Larson, and Hamlin. I think we have three of the same, Eric. Elliot, Logano, Larson, and Hamlin? Correct. Okay. Our only difference is Hamlin and Harvick. And I almost had Hamlin. I just thought Harvick. I almost went, because I was trying to think, like, who's going to win Homestead? But I feel like Larson's really good at Vegas. I feel like he can win that. Because I had Hamlin yep. winning a couple of mile and a half before that. And I'm like, Harvick, everybody's going to pick Reddick or Chastain at Homestead because they're good there. But Harvick's mm-hmm. sneaky good. And I feel like one of these years, I want to see him in the championship for at Phoenix. I'm like, this will be it. it. It was down to, I feel like our last driver into the four is pretty much the same two going for that final spot because mine was between Harvick and Hamlin. I'm like, uh, I'll yeah. give Harvick the win. 
I agree. Okay, so that means that all right, so just so you know, my final four, I have Elliot, Larson, Hamlin, and Harvick. And who are you having to win, CJ? I got to pull with Hamlin. I think he's going to pull it together through the last races. He's been so consistently fast as the last part of the season has wrapped up and we head toward the playoffs. I can't imagine the mistakes. Uh, this is the year I think he does not choke. Yeah, I mean, you, you would think sooner or later he'd get his championship. You never know. I agree with you. I'm going to go with Hamlin. Uh, Eric, who's your champion? Logano? I'm just going to ride Logano. Yeah. <laughs> I pick Hamlin every year. And it was if, if I didn't, if I didn't oh, good. win the finals, so, I was going to. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I do think Hamlin probably, but I keep going with Logano. So, okay. I pick Hamlin every year, and it never works for me. So, <laughs> this one, I'll go opposite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have our futures up there at racereviewonline.net. But right now, if, if so, taking a look at you, so your top, let's see, your top uh, would be Harvick, your top sleeper at 12 to 1 in the final four. That would be mine as well. Uh, and then Logano would be your top sleeper. Actually, yeah, Logano would be your top sleeper, actually, Eric. And you have a winning the championship. And that's also CJ's top sleeper, Logano. And my top sleeper is yep. Harvick. So those, so again, so Logano, uh, top sleepers for CJ and Eric. And it's interesting because what, Logano is second in points? Yeah. Okay. He finished second right there soon, yeah. So there you go. So that's not bad. I'm yeah. not sure what he's 14 to 1. 15 points behind Elliott starting the yeah. starting playoffs. That's not bad. Okay, so there you go. It's crazy. He's been like 20 and 20 to 1 for like the last month. I'm like, why? Yeah, he only he's dropped been to running 14 well when again. the playoffs started. Yeah. Yeah, so I keep taking this. That's why I keep throwing money. One, I thought he was going to win, and two, he just keep throwing 14, 16, 20 to 1 his way up. Same with Harvick. All year he's been like 25 to 1. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's that's probably why they're my top two right now, just because I just kept throwing hundred dollars their way. Just why they. All right, let me ask this then: If none of Eric, if none of your drivers in, in the final four make it or win it championship, let's just say that, and I'm gonna remove Hamlin from that equation as well. Your final four and Hamlin, give me your next champion. Hmm, Final Four and Hamlin. I would say I'm looking at my list here. Um, I'm gonna say Tyler Reddick. Oh, mm. I like it. Remember, he was good at Phoenix earlier in the year. I feel like he can win Homestead to get him in the championship four. So if I can't have those other five, I'll go with Reddick. Okay, CJ, if we eliminate the four drivers in your final four, and yeah, that's it. Who would you go with? Who would be your, your top guy? I don't know that I can disagree with Reddick. Um, I think that's a very smart choice, but because I want to give some little bit of different flavor, um, I think a sneaky one, you can't really call him sneaky, but it'd be interesting to see Kyle Busch win the championship with not having a ride <laughs> in twenty. Yeah, if that's still the case, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, okay. I would be curious. I almost advanced him a while, too. If he gets his contract situation figured out, which we've I talked think about I, a lot this year. If he gets it solved. Because he's mentioned that ha even if he's leaving, I feel like that headspace is out. Because yep. he said the same thing about Truex. Once he got that figured out, he hit the ground running. I totally so agree. Kyle, and remember, the two years... Kyle won the championship. Mm -hmm. He won zero playoff races until the last one. Yep. So he said that he hopes to announce the next seven to ten days where he's going. He's got two contracts on his on his table. So I feel like the pressure would be off of him. Then what can happen? That's I agree with you. I, I think once he gets that off of his mind, I think we see a totally different guy yep. on track. So and we'll be here because remember, wasn't he? Wasn't he first in points well, going into June when this whole thing happened? And that's what Elliot he was up off? there. He was definitely up there. I, he was like top two or three every week. And yep. then you could tell when the contract stuff, early June, was probably like, 
hey, Kyle, we still haven't found anything. We don't know what we're going to do. And you can tell, like, uh oh. And the results went south. So yeah. once that pressure is off, I just wonder. I mean, he's the road will, I don't expect much out of him because Toyotas no. have sucked <laughs> on road courses. But if he can, if he can manage Talladega yep. and every other win track, Texas. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's he definitely good. All right, if we take out this might be easy because Truex is there, but maybe it won't be. But if we take out Talladega, um, is is Martin Truex Jr. the easy pick for a non playoff driver to win a race? I think so. So let's remove Truex. Give me a driver. No Talladega. No Talladega, huh? Um. Why not an Eric Jones or a Chris Busher? Who would you pick between the two? I was going to say Busher. Busher, and you would go with Busher or Jones, CJ? I'd put Busher above Jones because uh, I think he's got a little bit more upside. I think Eric Jones has been more consistent. Either one of them, I, I wouldn't be shocked at this point if either one of them won the race. So it was, it's been an okay season for Busher then? It's been a pretty good season for Busher. Yeah. Um, he had a couple of things that he's always had speed. I think he had a couple of races and a, a number of things where he got caught in wrecks or had bad uh, luck fall befall him. Uh, I think you take out those things. I mean, he's been consistently solid. So I think this is a, a really good season for him, despite not yet having a win. Yeah, I mean, I had Bush on my fantasy team last year. I don't know. How to, I don't think I had him at all this year. But, um, you know, I, I, there's some talent there. And it's, uh, it's, it's a shame he hasn't been able to get that much needed win that he hasn't had in a while. So and for Keselowski, I mean, Keselowski could uh, jump up. They've got the equipment that's neat that can compete and can win races. I think with a little bit of fine tuning, they certainly took a big step forward. This is the old Roush. Remember this is when, you know, just a couple of years ago, we were all asking where the heck is Roush. They fell off the face yeah. of the earth. And yeah. All these problems. They've been in for, with a snip of a, of a win multiple times this season, both drivers, uh, Kozlowski started the year off winning his qualifying race. Didn't Busher win his qualifying race too? I think he did. Yep. Um, so it, it could absolutely happen for either one of those drivers. Uh, Very good. Do we know? Do you know the stat, uh, Eric, as far as uh, the, the how many drivers have won the first playoff race and then won the championship? Yeah, uh, I have it up. Um, three? Three. I think three. And I only use that loosely as because I'm only going to 2014 because this whole thing's changed yeah. once you get 2014. Yeah. Um. Because anything prior, you're still going on points. 2014 was the, the 14 win and barometer. move on. Okay. Yeah, and it was every other year I think. So this year would be the one that doesn't happen. Okay. Because last year, no, maybe it would be because Hamlin won that were Southern 500 last year. And he didn't win the championship, so maybe this is the year it can happen. Okay. Uh, Darlington, and this kicks it off uh, quickly. Uh, there are five drivers we've all agreed on. CJ, do you know who those drivers are? Oh, my goodness. Um... Give Eric a break this week since you're here. Let's see, Elliot? No, just you and I took Elliot. All right, then Larson? Yes. All right. Um, did I take Reddick? Yeah, you did. We all did. All right. There's two. <laughs> I can't remember if I took him. Um, Hamlin. Yes, we all did. Um, how about Blaney? No, you were the only one. Yeah, I didn't. I, I can't remember if he was one. Logano? Uh, no, I did not take really? him. Really? Okay. Um, geez. One is easy because we, 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 we pick this guy every week, the three of us. And he finally came no, through for us. Yep. Oh my gosh. I have Harvey. no idea. Oh, yeah. All right. Harvick. <laughs> and in the last one. Then, so, so Harvick makes sense. Last one would probably be. Um, I think I did not take Kyle. Um, 
I may have taken Eric Jones, though. Just you and I took Jones. Oh, Eric, why didn't you take Jones? <laughs> He's good at. I went with the. He is. I went with the playoff train. I was like, I'm just. Yeah. I always stuck with. Usually, you, you'll see. I have like a book of drivers, but this time, I'm, like, I'm going to do all different right. playoffs. Yeah. I'm only going to do playoff drivers. Is it Truex? Are we all hoping no, to the non-playoff? Nobody took Truex. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, Eric. Is it Chastain? Yes. Suarez. All right, got it. Have you on the track house, guys? <laughs> so there you go. And as far as the most money wagered, it looks like, uh, let's see, Eric, and again, we have 200 this week to invest in. So Eric put most of his money on the top two drivers, as did you, CJ. So you both went. And is that because of the track that you guys uh, expect? Like the cre- Not just because of the playoffs, but, but this doesn't seem like a lot of long shots usually do well at Darlington. Very rare for a long shot to win at Darlington. You've got to either you get the track on your first time out or you never get it for the rest of your career. It's one or the other. And it's pretty obvious who rises to the top here. All right. And as far as long shots, your biggest long shot, Eric, uh, you have Bell and Dylan. Who would you take uh, if you had to choose between the two? Probably Bell. He was sixth there in May. Toyotas were pretty good. Um like CJ said, it's it's a it's a veteran track. It's a it's a track the big teams are gonna win. They always do. And I just like Bell with just the sixth place finish in May. Okay. I'll ride that way. Right. A couple things. Uh Chevy has not won in the last eleven races at Darlington. The top three odds drivers for this race are all Chevy. Uh Harvick was the last Chevy to win from the pole in 2014. But we've got, as we close out, we must talk about the race in May and how Joey Logano won the race, basically wrecking Chevy, William Byron, two laps to go, and the talk of a possible payback, which has yet to happen. Which, by the way, is the reason I stood away from Logano. So what do you guys think? about possible payback for Logano in this race. I don't think it happens. I don't I, I the only don't. reason I would say no is I don't think a Hendrick guy is gonna want the beef because I, for Byron's case you have to catch him to pay him back. I don't feel like Byron can catch him right now. Um and I don't know if his teammates would want to jump in the fray like I don't want him mad at me for payback with Bristol. So it's gotta be Byron I think if there's any payback I think it, I yeah. agree. I agree with Eric. I think it has to come from Byron. He has to catch Logano to get there. Keep in mind, Logano led 107 of those. Sure. Wasn't a fluke. Yeah. So yeah, he, he was, was going to pass was him anyways. Yeah. Uh, but Byron's in the playoffs too. So when retribution comes, Byron's going to be out of the playoffs, and Logano has got to be in. So as soon as that happens, Bro, that's when we start yep. keeping an eye on Byron and Logano. Yep. Okay. By the way, 10 of the last 14 winners at Darlington have started in the top 10. Five of them in the top five, including the last three winners, have come in first, started first, second, and fourth. So you guys uh, believe that that's going to be the case again, that uh, a track position qualifying is going to be very important? thousand percent. Yep. And uh, anything else we need to keep an eye on? See, uh, What are you working on, Eric, for the race? On your website, anything important regarding trends or anything like that? No, those are already up. So maybe a, a post after qualifying, just because now with practice being, what, 20, 25 minutes, you don't really gain much. Um, so just a starting lineup. And my picks usually don't change much between the weekend from now through race day, because you really don't have much to go off of unless they. So you're not concerned at all with, with Chevy at Darlington? No, because they were up front, and I feel like Toyota, they're the best team. I remember, right, when in the final stage, when, what, four of them were all collected in that wreck on the backstretch, and they're all, like, four of the top five, and they were all Toyota, so I feel like they're the best. But, again, they all got caught up in a wreck, so anything could happen. Chastain will be there. I mean, he was, what, third in this race last year. He wrecked while leading. He's a Chevy guy in May, so, no, I'm not too concerned. I feel like 
top tens for them. They'll be around, and if somebody takes themselves out, they're right there. So, and, out. And, so and, I'm not, and I'm your not mind won't change based on qualifying or practice. No, because I still feel like the top sixteen playoff guys are going to be your guys to beat. I just don't see anything getting in the way. Um, it's a veteran type track. You push too hard, your tire's going to fall off, and you're going to fade. These guys know how to race it, so. Even if Danny Hamlin starts last, it's not going to change my mind. I still feel like he'll be a, a contender to win. By the way, I'll say I'll say I'll say one thing about uh, practice and Eric's dis- diminishment of it this year. Uh, you know, last couple of years we didn't have practice, um, so you know it was you know show up and, and drive what you got. This year we have very small amount of practice, but if you look at the number of cars that have been off in that twenty five minutes of practice but then have made adjustments on their cars prior to the race and shot through the field. These cars, for whatever reason, are much more adjustable than the ones in the, in the past. So if you are off in practice, that does not mean you're going to be off in the race. You have plenty of opportunity yep. adjustments under pit stops to be able to, even by the end of the first stage, get yourself back inside the top 10. Chastain just did it a couple of weeks ago. And I bet you, if you look back at all the qualifying or all the, practice times uh versus first and second stage finishes in the races i think you'd find quite a few cars that are able to make the adjustments that they need to get fast for the race yeah that's that's i totally agree that happens a lot because a lot of times they're saying it almost hurts you to be fast because you don't want to tinker with the fast race car but these guys that weren't fast and like look we just tried something out throw everything but the kitchen sink at it in the meantime because we got nothing to lose more to gain and they actually do gain and another thing I wouldn't discredit too is seven of these 10 playoff tracks we've raced at already. And you go to the tracks. It seems like that you go to a second time. Look who's winning. The veterans are back yep. up top again. So that's why I feel like Harvick was very undervalued for Vegas. I'm like, whoa, he's still not, I, I would have had him way farther up. Yeah. I mean, look what he did at Richmond. So yeah, he's, he's seeing this track again. So I feel like that's a, they just look at the spring race as like a 400 mile test session. So you know what not to do or what to do when you come back. So this practice this week, and so it's, it's relevant, but it's not the end all be all because it's kind of, we already have data that we can bring with us. So I think you're going to start seeing the bigger teams separate here in the playoffs because they have that notebook. Now. And that goes with what you were saying a few weeks ago regarding all the stats this year on the drivers that were not even showing up the first two stages but we're winning mm-hmm. races mm-hmm. Yep. so you, you can you, you can not do anything in practice first stage second stage but you can still close the deal and get it done absolutely okay yeah yeah you just tinker with that car all race yeah because it, it you just it'd be foolish if you're leading or dominating like hey you know what maybe we should try this out sure no you're probably going to stick with what yeah. got you there but these other guys have been like, well, we're trying this. We're getting better. We're getting better. And, oh, that really works. Let's get track position. And now they're gone. Yeah. That's all they needed. So, yeah, it's – but as we're seeing these tracks again, I think that's really where we're – that's where I feel like going to next year with these practice sessions. And then you're really going to start seeing even more of a separation, which is why Paul <laughs> to say the 16 I, winners isn't going to happen. Okay. It, yeah. All right. I, <laughs> we'll see about that. I hope you're wrong, of course. I, I, and you know you oh, hope I do you're too, wrong. Because of the betting now. Oh, I <laughs> hope I'm wrong, too. I just, I, I've seen this enough yeah. to know that, like, oh, the Hendrick guy is now like, oh, we've got four sets of data. Now, if Byron and Bowman just turn it on, then you know they've been testing stuff all, all right through the season. Like, oh, look, now magically they're winning again. Oh, Hendrick was smarter than all of us. I so. came this close <laughs> to putting a little bit of money on Byron this week, just in case, because, you know, he – Almost won the race this year. So. Wouldn't have been a bad play. Um, and then, uh, by the way, I my two uh, top uh, investments this week were Hamlin and Harvick. That maybe that shouldn't be a surprise. And uh, I actually actually decided to put money on Kyle Busch. So I haven't been putting any money on Kyle Busch. We know the reasons. We've talked about it for weeks. But I just I said, you know what? I'll give him a chance this week. One chance, beginning of the playoffs, because we know how good Kyle has been at this racetrack, even though he hasn't led a lot of laps recently here and has had some wrecks here lately. But I just figured, what the heck? Let me see if I can do that. Um, Finally, top three, Eric. 
Who's your top three to win this race? Hamlin, Harvick, Chastain. Oh, so there you go. Hamlin and Harvick. The money up over where I put most of my money. Hamlin and Harvick and Chastain. Uh, uh, CJ? Hamlin, Larson, and Elliott. Hamlin, Larson, Elliott. And my three are Hamlin, Harvick, and Reddick. Guys, I appreciate it. Uh, CJ, uh, we have to do this at least one more time. Phoenix? Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Hopefully we get uh, more than 16 winners by then. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sure we, I have a feeling we will. <laughs> so you think we'll have nine winners by then? Nine different winners? I don't know if we'll have nine, <laughs> but uh, I think we might hit 20 by the end of the year. Oh, you mean total? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, CJ, we can't wait to talk to you again. Because uh, that means it's Thanksgiving, something like that. But anyway, actually, yeah, we yep. can wait to talk to you again <laughs> this time because we want to relish football season. And, That's yeah, true. Now that we're finally here, <laughs> appreciate your time. And by the way, rotowire.com. Rotowire.com will have uh, DraftKings and daily fantasy sports previews for trucks, Xfinity, and Cup. Uh, trucks are off this week. They'll be back next week, though. And then we'll have the NASCAR barometer up usually on Mondays. And now we're doing previews of the Formula One races as well. So we've got some betting odds there as well. If you want to check those out, some driver props, some race props, as well as daily fantasy for Formula One. So getting ready for the Dutch Grand Prix this weekend, along with Darlington. And Eric, uh, the IndyCar Series Championship? Yeah, two more races left. Two more to Portland go this week, and then hey, two more. Why didn't weekend. Why didn't you tell me you were at Mid Ohio? I was there too. I, know, I forgot. And yeah, Eric totally. You were you both knew there? I was there. We were both God, there. Yes. <laughs> I forgot. And then the bad thing is, I didn't even see your comment till like two weeks later. <laughs> I think like, I can't comment now. That's two weeks. That's two weeks later. I looks like a dick. <laughs> I didn't. I forgot. And then I saw it in the two weeks later. It reminded me why you were there. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I feel like an idiot. Exactly. I totally spaced it. I totally spaced it. <laughs> that would have been funny if we'll, you guys we'll ran into it. each other. Oh, I wish. know. It's, like, <laughs> it's not like it's a huge track. I don't know how no. we didn't even see each other. But, yeah, we were we were both there. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Classic. Uh, we'll talk to you. Uh, talk, Eric, uh, next week. And, uh, CJ, we'll talk to you in November. Sounds good. Thanks for having me.